Evelyn Chermont of KN, French Guyana. Couple is caught up in hell. I was brought up as a child in my parents' church. My whole family was in that denomination. As a teenager I walked to this church every day. I've never felt any change in my life. My family drank wine, beer, and all kinds of alcoholic beverages. The doctrine of our ministry did not prohibit that. My parents spoke of transformation and preached against sin, but never obeyed the word. Even the pastor came home drunk and argued with his wife. I did not believe that the Bible transformed lives and I came to believe that it was just a book. The pastor of the church where my family congregated, did not believe in the gifts of Holy Spirit. For him prophecies, revelations, healings, visions and signs and wonders could not happen in today's churches. He believed that all this ended up with the apostles of Jesus. I stopped going to church and went to dances and drinks, where I learned to use cigarettes and drink. I met a boy named Augusta and we started dating. We moved in together. Fights began to take place at home and we physically attacked each other. Until we left marks on each other. Our marital relationship was inconsistent. We thought. Differently. One wanted to control the other. Our jealousy was the fuel that made us argue. The situation began to get worse. I looked for a. Different church from where my family congregated. I remembered Jesus and wanted a change. In my life. I went to a Pentecostal church and several times fell into demonic manifestations. The Christians. Of that church believe in supernatural things different from the one in which I congregated. I. Became part of that church. What made me frustrated was that almost every day I got into church and fell to the ground. A. Legion took possession of my body and threw me to the ground. It was this legion that made me fight with my husband. I could not free myself. I was going to church, but then I went to the bars. I tried several times to fool my pastor by saying that I was set free. And when I went to worship, I fell to the ground. The pastor said that I was not freed and had to renounce sin in order not to fall more demonized. I could not fool the pastor. And when I started to go to the night parties, I already knew that I was going to fall in demonic manifestation the next day in church. I started to go to another church, where the pastor did not have the same spiritual perception. I did everything I wanted. I drank a lot of alcohol and then entered the church. I was in church almost every day and nothing happened. It was in this church where the devil wanted me and that's where he took me. Where their presence is not felt nor their plans revealed. Since the demon did not manifest in me in this church, it brought about a false appearance of liberation. This pastor who does not have discernment anointed me to be an evangelist because I was going every day to his church. I became a member of that church with a false conversion. I did not want to renounce the world and the pleasures and serve in the church. The blind shepherd did not see the demon of the sensuality and seduction that dwelt in me. The pastor allowed me to minister in the church even though I was kneeling. I got married, but it was not official in the papers, I just went to live together. When I got home fights and arguments with my husband happened. Our fights looked like a boxing match. We got to curl up on the floor. I even broke my husband's nose. He was frightened. By my strength, not even a man could hold me. I had a legion of demons that broke everything. One day I was at the bar and the legion entered me. Four strong men could not hold me or prevent me from breaking the bar chairs. They all fell on their faces from the terrible force that I had. But... All this legion entered my body when I drank beer and other drinks. I've always been a frail woman. What gave me strength was the legion that took my body. My husband, even being strong, became afraid of challenging me to a physical fight. The last fight we 
had when he tried to hit me resulted in his aching body that made him startled. People did not like to see me beat my husband and made plans to poison me. Our relationship was no longer the same and my husband started cheating on me with another woman. I began to like my pastor and the spirit of seduction that was in my life began to act against the pastor. I began to follow my husband until I caught a glimpse of another woman. I had no violent reaction. I started seducing my pastor and we started going out together to the motel. He was married and his wife is a faithful woman. There was no reason for him to betray his wife. She knew that her husband was betraying her and did not want the marriage to be destroyed. She did everything to reconcile with her husband. He was embarrassed by what he did, left his wife, and called me to travel with him. He wanted to start a life somewhere else to hide his sins. But, from God no one can hide or flee. I destroyed his marriage and his pastor ministry. The scandals came to the ears of his members before he left, and this caused a great revolt in the church. I had to leave that church so I would not be attacked by the members. My pastor wanted me to leave my husband and go with him, even though I did not have the courage to go. My husband had visited a church and was converted. He cried a lot and was sorry he had betrayed me. That day he was waiting for me at home. He was surprised when I got home and even though he betrayed me with another woman, my calm reaction in not wanting to assault him caught his attention. He was different and asked me for forgiveness that night before I slept. My husband had undergone a transformation and was already belonging to Jesus, but I did not know yet. It was that night that God began to work in my life. There was a man praying for my deliverance since I left his church. He was Pastor Oliver, the one who drove the demons out of me. Every time I stepped into his church the demons were manifesting. The demons took me from that church so I would not be set free. They took me to another church thinking that they would disrupt God's plans in my life. And God told the pastor to intercede for my life if not the demons would use me to kill my husband and still kill myself. Those were the thoughts that came into my head. That night for the first time I heard my husband's plea for forgiveness. I was unresponsive and started crying unanswered while he slept in peace. I spent the whole dawn thinking about my life and the terrible sins I committed. That night a voice told me, Do not leave your husband, he will be a great man used in my hands and you will be proud of him. I thought I was going crazy to hear that voice and I woke up my husband. I was very scared and called my husband to say a prayer. Together we began to feel chills and a strong evil feeling around us. We came to see several demons in our room. One of them approached us and touched the two of us. We felt together strong headaches looked like ice rocks in our brain. Demons. My name is Augusta and I say we felt the same pain, the ice of death came upon us with terrible pain. Our body began to stiffen and our level of consciousness began to fall until we opened our eyes again and realized that although we were on earth our reality was spiritual. Millions and thousands of demons walked the streets, avenues and others flew through the air. Some had bird wings and were a hybrid mix part man and part animals. One of those demons chained me and another one arrested my husband. They dragged people like dogs in the chain to a path down to the bottom. It is a very wide road decorated with flowers and full of precious stones. Those flowers were normal, but as I passed them, they started to give out evil cackles. They were devils disguising themselves as flowers. The demon kept dragging me until I stepped on those precious stones. They turned into snakes and I took several bites on my legs. The pains were intense and my legs were with holes the size of a lemon. And from those black holes came blood flowing from my legs. That wide road that looked beautiful with flowers and precious stones was all illusion. All that beauty was a disguise. 
the demons were transformed into those landscapes and they assaulted everyone who passed that way. That path is what leads to hell. And if you are in the world and have not yet converted you are treading this long road. The way of the world offers pleasures, drinks, sex, festivals, and a free life that can do all you want, but your reality is hell at the end of that path. The wide path I had taken before reaching hell gave me the same sense of pleasure and well-being, until I was surprised by the snakes who disguised themselves as precious stones. And if you continue on the path of the world, when you die you will tread down this path where I passed until you reach the gate of hell. Sexy clothing. I also came after my husband and being bitten by snakes suffering the pains of the poison. They Snakes only stung our legs because we liked to wear shorts. They only stung where the nudity was. Where it was covered in clothes, those parts of the body were not stung. I noticed when a boy who came down behind us was also stung, but on his back, breasts, and bellies because he liked to walk. Shirtless. The demon that carried me said, all those who wear shorts showing their legs will have them tormented by serpents in hell regardless of whether they are male or female. And who likes to be without shirt will have the body tormented by the bites. The shorts have to be worn underneath a pair of pants, but cannot be worn as normal clothing. Me and my husband went down to hell and crowds of lost souls came in front and others behind. We arrived at the gate of hell and all the people were chained. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, he sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives and restoration of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Jesus came to free our lives from sin and the prisons of the devil. Jesus offered his deliverance for all to emerge from the bondage of Satan. Most people choose to be prisoners of the devil. All that multitude died stuck in their sins prisoners of carnal pleasures, did their evil desires serving their carnal desires of evil. Those who serve their flesh are not serving themselves but Satan. When we got to the black gate the padlock opened and the whole crowd was thrown into the darkness. My husband and I were pushed in and dropped down. We fell like stones until we reached the ground of hell. What I witnessed was a devastated place. It seemed that they threw a thousand atomic bombs in there and a strong stench of burnt flesh. The desire I had was to get out of that place, I do not want even the worst killer or sorcerer to come to this place. Gay Pastors I saw gay pastors who opened churches for homosexuals, they suffered a lot because their sins were abominable before God. These shepherds are sodomites and were in the same place as those who practiced unnatural sex sins the bible says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels no human being as terrible as he is deserves that place i was tortured and the demons reminded me of my sins especially when i hurt the pastor's ministry by destroying his marriage there i paid for all the evil that i had done i also felt dread of that place and in the depths of my heart I knew that belonged to that place for having died stuck in my sins. My husband and I died captives of the world, being prisoners of sin. The demons had every right about our lives as we were theirs. Those demons made us their prisoners and dragged us to all the places of hell, torturing our bodies with great cruelty. That was the result of one who dies a prisoner of his flesh, performing all his sinful pleasures. We died imprisoned in our sins and the demons threw us into the dungeon of hell. All the sins that we have committed have passed before our eyes. My mind was programmed to think of all the evil things we had done. Since when we were bitten my husband and I had a sense of what is wrong. Tortures. The carnivorous rats attacked us in our dungeon. These rats have beast powers and jumped on top of me, I had no resistance against them. I was overwhelmed by millions of satanic rats who tear at me with their fine teeth. They were everywhere and they were infernal mice that looked like rodent beasts devouring all souls. 
Already I was attacked by a swarm of beetle that bit me and tear off pieces of my body. These devil beetles tormented all souls. I got into hysteria and started screaming like crazy. Rescue. When my husband and I were rescued from hell by a supernatural force that got us out of there. Our lives has changed radically. I went to visit the pastor's ex-wife who destroyed his ministry. I apologized to her and also to her ex-husband, I tried to reconcile the two, but I do not know if they came back. My conjugal life, I have regularized in the notary's office, officializing my life before the law of marriage and before God. Now I was truly married, because God bothered me by saying that I would go to hell if I continued to be living together in sin. Prophecy Jesus told me to deliver a prophecy to the assembly of God. I raised you my bride to make a difference on earth more than a hundred years ago when the churches were corrupted. Today you are different from your bridegroom, why did you change? How I longed for that time when you prayed with my heart and followed my statutes. Good times when you loved me like a real bride who yearned for her fiancé. How many souls did you gain when you were pure, how many children were born of you to me? You started well and now you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth if you do not return to first love. I have yet been merciful in this ministry because of the forefathers who have kept the truth in their hearts. These few are the saved remnants. I paid a visit to this ministry and realized that it is worse than where I congregate. My pastor said that he had already gathered in the assembly of God said that thirty years ago. The anointing that this ministry had was so great that it did not compare with our small ministry. When I delivered this prophecy on an opportunity I had in the assembly of God at a congress. The whole church did not glorify and the persecutions came. They never gave me a chance again and I never preached again in this ministry. My schedule has been cancelled from all church assemblies. The love of Jesus came to my heart that I supported the stones and still learned to love. My opponents. Jesus had a prophecy delivered to the church, God is love. As God did with the people of Israel, he raised up that nation on earth to make a difference in the land among the Egyptians, Midianians, Philistines, and other peoples. Jesus raised the church God is love to make a difference on earth. To be a different people in the light of the world. God showed me the vision of a seed that fell from the sky and began to grow, becoming a giant tree. Its branches were toward the north, south, east and west. Jesus said, Son, I have made this ministry grow and spread to the four corners of the world because of my faithfulness to my word. They cannot make alliances with ungodly churches nor copy the teachings they teach. If they do this, I will raise another ministry in their place and make them shine like a star in the darkness. I remember that in 2005, several sick people when they stepped on their feet in this church were healed. People who were demon-possessed when they entered this church were ill and demons were manifesting. Demons did not stay inside the people watching the service and laughing at the pastor. The demons would not let me set foot in this church, I was afraid of the ministry. Today I am a Christian and after several years I went to visit this church in my neighborhood. And realized that people no longer fall into demonic manifestation. It is no longer the same. Healing and demons falling just as old did not happen anymore. I cannot tell if they are all like this but the one in my neighborhood has changed a lot. What I can say is that many churches were influenced to walk in holiness because of that church. Another church near my home called Pentecostal Holiness Church to the Lord who was a church much feared by the demons in the 90s. Today it is a spiritually cold church that no longer prays and no longer forbids sin. And if they continue to open up to the world, I am sorry to say that spiritual death is certain for them. As the prophet Jeremiah mourned for Jerusalem, I shed tears for this ministry, and I tell the members of this church to pray not to enter into worldliness. This ministry was a reference to the sanctity of other ministries to follow as an example. I thank God for everything and may his peace be upon all. Amen.